his cheek straight away. Good morning, and welcome to the first Sunday of Advent. I, I, I truly enjoy Advent. It's the time of the season where we just get to build up that expectation of the Christ child. I have a few uh, announcements I want to make for you in a little bit, but first I want to say welcome and thank you for being here. Um, and if you are a first-time visitor, we do have a card in the pew in front of you. If you would just take that out, fill out that card, and then at the end of the service, if you would just put it in the back in the offering plate, uh, that way we can get in touch with you and say thank you for being here with us today. Also, those visiting online, we so appreciate you continuing to do that and being with us. Thank you for being a part of the service every Sunday and being faithful. Some of the announcements I have for you, I just want to touch base on to this evening because it will look a little different for the, on the youth and the children's side. Um, the youth and children are going to have their choir practice, and it's going to be during the whole time. It's going to start at 4 with the youth, and then five with the children, am I right, Kathy? And then they're gonna be combined, and that'll go until 6.30. So there will be no youth hang time, and there also will not be dinner tonight. There's also adult Bible study still going on, men's, or adult Bible study at 5.30, or make sure I got that correct, yes, 5.30. So just remember, no hang time for the youth, but there is choir if they're in choir during that whole time, and also no dinner will be offered tonight. Down at the bottom on page four, just to make note there, is, there's a called, special called business meeting. Uh, that'll be on Wednesday, December 8th, and that's to go over the finalization of the budget. So remember that is Wednesday, December 8th, and that'll be at seven o'clock. On your insert that you have, there are two pieces I wanna to touch base with, it is the Santa breakfast. Um, that'll be coming up on December 11th, and you can sign up for that and just fill that out, and you can turn that also into the offering plate or into the office. And also, this is your last day to order your poinsettias. So if you would like to order a poinsettia and have that for right during the Christmas season, it'll be displayed up here. Then after, you can pick that up. The last day to order will be today. We are in a time of hope. Hope is this amazing place where it, think about the future, right? You're hoping on the future. And our hope is in something that has already happened, the Christ child. So continue to focus on what the Christ child means to you and what it can mean to you if you don't understand what the Christ child is. I hope this season you come to know God even closer and develop that strong hope in the Lord. Let us worship our God in praise. Let's sing, everybody. And at this time of year, we need to do all of our Christmas songs. And uh, just time out and hang on. Your praise team will be here, okay? One, two, three, four. <laughs>
today. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things. Thanks to him. Kept up with that, you're doing something. <laughs> we come to our Advent lighting now, and Ellen Sablewski is going to lead us today. Good morning. Our scripture this morning is from Isaiah. Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to his son, and will call him Emmanuel. It's Isaiah 7:14. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious day that you've given us. Lord, you give us so much, so many things to be grateful for. But Lord, the thing that we are most grateful for is that you sent your son, not because of anything we did or anything we deserve, but because you love us that much. Lord, in this time of Advent, help us to remain focused on him and not all the other things that we connect with the, the holiday season. Let this Christmas season be all about you, Lord. We ask that in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Ellen. Because of him, there is hope. And when we pray, we pray with all hope. 
One of the things that uh, gives me great joy in these parts is to be able to come together and remember different ones uh, and those beyond these walls for prayer. There are so many in great need, as you know. This uh, holiday weekend, sadly, we lost two of our dear members. And it was very tragic in terms of um, just the physical loss itself. In both situations, these folks were declining in health, um, but it seemed to go toward the end kind of rapidly. And that's what uh, caught me off guard and perhaps so many of you. Uh, Thanksgiving morning, about four in the morning, um, Dick Meyer passed away. Dick, as you know, was moved last Saturday out to the hospice community house of, of Bon Secours in uh, Southside. And so he was there for just several days. Um, it was a situation, too, where it was complicated because his wife, Sharon, developed COVID and went into pneumonia. So she had to be at home. She was there Monday when I was out there with them. But then soon after that, had to go home. So we want to pray also for her recovery as well as her time of loss and bereavement. And all of the family, including Dick's twin brother and his other siblings and their two sons and seven grandchildren. So many to be remembering. We also, sadly, yesterday late morning, lost Shirley Jackman. And Shirley, as you know, was struggling with dementia for some time, but also um, had dealt with, over a period of time, pulmonary fibrosis. And so her latter days were difficult, to say the least, in terms of not eating for several days and struggling with breathing. Um, when I was there on Friday morning, I wondered if she would even make it another day, and she did make it one more day. So we want to remember Roy and, of course, his three children, uh, Clara, uh, Ted, and Bill along with all of their grandchildren and great-grandchildren. They have many. These are difficult days, uh, even without this kind of news, aren't they? But this makes it doubly difficult. But we know that with God, we have all hope. And these two were strong believers in the Lord. We know their whereabouts now, and they're in the best of places. And I do hope and pray along with you, I know that we extend our sympathy, but we also strive to give assurance to all these family members that they too can have hope in the Lord because of the eternal residence their loved one is experiencing now. Others uh, we want to be remembering are Krista Goodrich, who was diagnosed with uh, COVID and a touch of pneumonia, and also Jack Clark, young Jack Clark, tested positive for COVID this week. Uh, Barbara Boggs, so many of you remember her fondly, don't you? She, unfortunately, is now in hospice care out at Lakewood, so we want to be remembering her and her three sons and all of that family during these days. Um, Jesse Gay Armstrong, we want to continue to remember Jesse Gay. I believe she got home on Tuesday, right? And we're thankful for that. Betty Elam, who got through her uh, skin cancer surgery well on Wednesday, and uh, also Teresa Falwell, who got through her knee replacement surgery and uh, at home now. And uh, then we want to remember this week, Betty Rock. She'll have the first of two cataract surgeries on Wednesday. And so many others, of course, to be remembering in prayer. And I know you grieve like I do over the tragedy of last weekend and the parade and the terrible, terrible incident with uh, many being killed and injured there in Wisconsin. Um, pray for healing, pray for comfort, and pray for forgiveness. Uh, that's got to be one of the toughest things to do, for, even for a Christian, is to forgive. But God asks us to do that, and we just pray for those families who are just grieving the loss of loved ones. I would also like for us to remember today the situation with this variant, uh, Omicron or whatever it's called, the uh, variant of COVID that seems to be hitting some other countries now. We're hoping and praying it doesn't run too rampant, especially 
here in the United States, not that we don't care about the rest of the world, but this is not what we need. None of us do. And so we just pray for people to remain safe and cautious and do the things we need to do in that regard. Also, I want to say again, as I did in an email this week, how thankful I am to each of you and your contributions, not only to our annual giving or our weekly offering, our tithes and offerings, but to our thank or thanksgiving offering. Uh, this has already been the best uh, total that uh, we've had since I've been here at Hunton. And you'll see that in your bulletin today. Um, that may not be the end of it. But I thank you so much because what this does is it incredibly supplements our budget when we have a shortfall so that we can continue to share Christ with all of Glen Allen and indeed to the world. And how important it is that we continue to uh, live out the mission statement that God has placed upon our hearts and our vision as well to know Christ knowing Christ and uh, making Him known. May this be a time in which we remember and for which we give much thanks. So as we pray, we ask God to bless all of our tithes and offerings and be with all of these dear loved ones. Father in heaven, we are thankful indeed for a moment like this in worship to stop and reflect and realize that stewardship is a vital part of worship, giving back to you, and not only with our financial resources, but with our time and our energy. And I see that expended so often here at Hunton, and I thank you for it. All the host of volunteers, the servant leaders who do so much for so many. Lord, may we continue to serve you faithfully with each and every day, with all the strength you have given us. We ask, Lord, that you also be with those who are hurting in any sort of way this morning. Certainly these who are struggling because of health, these who are recovering from surgeries, and certainly those who are in a time of loss and bereavement. We ask that you bless each one and bring them to a state of hope. May they realize that because of you, they are not in a helpless or hopeless situation. May we realize today, too, that we are to be transforming agents unto others. So may we share the love of Jesus Christ, your Son, and our Savior with all. In His name we pray. Amen. As our praise team gets ready to come up, and we stand as we get ready to continue to praise. Please stand. I think in times like this, this, this song that we're getting ready to, to praise God with forever, um, it just reminds me that God is our everlasting God. He is the beginning, the end, the alpha, and the omega. And no matter what our trials and tribulations we go through here for this brief time that we're here on this planet, God is God. He is good. He is great. He is mighty. And he is everlasting. Amen.
want to also mention here, um, you may have seen them already in the vestibule. You'll see some flyers like this on either side of the tables. And uh, this is our Santa breakfast, an annual event uh, with our children. And so we just want you to take a flyer or take multiple flyers, pass those out in your neighborhood and give them to your friends. You'll see the information all there. This is on Saturday, December the 11th. So less than two weeks away here from 8 in the morning until 10 we'll be serving. And you'll see the prices there as well. Very reasonable. So we thank everyone who is involved with that in any sort of way. And also regarding this afternoon, um, as many as possible, come out at 2 o'clock um, and try to help out as far as decorating uh, for the season. And actually, that will include outside too because the nativity scene needs to go up. And uh, that's always a highlight as well. Yeah, we could use some strong backs and help with that as well. So I know Kathy will appreciate all the help indoors, and Mel Mozingo will appreciate the help outdoors, and whatever you can do this afternoon starting at 2 o'clock. I thank you so much for that. As we're here today, um, with this Advent reminder about hope as we ring in the Advent season on this first Sunday, it reminds me of how oftentimes we use that word hope kind of uh, loosely and freely, if you will. I heard about a gentleman who was very charitable, and he went to the hospital. He was a little bit of an entertainer, um, took his keyboard with him, and so he enjoyed doing that and trying to cheer up the patients there. Well, one day as he was kind of winding things down, he was in the room of an elderly gentleman, and he had done some songs and said some things and tried to be entertaining as he could to try to pick this gentleman's spirits up. Well, after he finished his final performance there for the old man, he said to him, I hope you get better. And that gentleman with a little smirky smile said, I hope you get better too. Hope, we use that quite frequently. Speaking of hope, let's check out this uh, short video to help us focus on what hope is ultimately. Thank you. 
want to thank Ronnie Phillips for securing and displaying this for us today. I have Advent and Christmas words for you this morning. You may be asking, well, what exactly is Advent? Well, Advent is the arrival of a notable person or a thing or an event. Advent is the first season of the Christian church calendar. Did you know that? Makes sense with birth. It's the first season, even though we're in December, just about. It's the first season of the Christian church year, and it leads up to Christmas and includes, of course, the four preceding Sundays. In Christian theology, Advent is the coming or the second coming of Christ. So here we are today on the first Sunday of Advent. Hope Sunday. Being Hope Sunday, I have two passages I like to read. First, from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 8, reading verses 16 and 17. Here, as Isaiah and his disciples are referenced, bind up the testimony, seal the teaching among my disciples. I will wait for the Lord who is hiding his face from the house of Jacob, and I will hope in him. And then from Luke's gospel, chapter 1, beginning with verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, since I have no husband? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Thanks be to God. For his holy word, from which we read a portion this morning, how inspired it is. As we consider the theme of the great gift of hope, and you will see this in succeeding Sundays as we talk about the themes of Advent. We'll talk about the grace gift of peace. We'll talk about the grace gift of joy. And we'll talk about the grace gift gift of love. And all of that, of course, will culminate at Christmas when we consider the grace gift of Christ. This morning, as our first point of the message, may we realize that before the first Christmas, The world was hopeless. The world was hopeless. It's even difficult for us, I think, to imagine how hopeless the world was during those days. I know it seems like it's sort of hopeless for us some days, but it surely was then, there before that first Christmas. You see, Israel had pretty much lost her faith. The Jews were under the iron boot of Rome. The Jewish leaders, they were corrupt. Their worship was empty and sterile. 
the people, they were discouraged. And even though God had promised the Messiah, for 400 years, there had been no prophet. No prophet since Malachi had spoken. It seemed like the heavens were silent. No doubt a little bit like Isaiah felt there when God was hiding from Jacob. All the prophecies of Jeremiah and Isaiah, they were so long ago that their words were almost forgotten. It really was a world without hope. It seemed to be a hopeless world politically. Perhaps we can relate to that today. It was a hopeless world because two-thirds of the world, two-thirds of the world were actually slaves. So this is the kind of world into which Jesus was born. Martin Pistorius was just 12 years old when a mysterious illness began slowly robbing him of his ability to walk, talk, or communicate on any level. Finally, he descended into a vegetative state that, the, that left the doctors really baffled and certainly his family depressed and despaired. His parents were told to just take your son home because his time was limited. But his time wasn't limited. Martin just kept going and going, according to his mother. The first two years, Martin was indeed in a coma-like condition, motionless, unresponsive, and utterly unconscious. But some two years into this ordeal, his mind began to wake up. Unfortunately, his mind was the only thing that began to awaken. Martin was soon fully conscious, but he was unable to communicate with the outside world. No one, not even his closest caretakers or doctors, knew that he could hear and see everything going on around him. Martin felt trapped, claustrophobic, terrified, and he felt that he would surely go insane. His lowest moment came when he heard his own mother say, I hope you die. So full of despair, she later unsuccessfully attempted to take her own life. As for his father, for the next decade, his father's life consisted of getting up early in the morning, driving his helpless son to a special care center, then picking him up eight hours later and driving him home, where he would be bathed, fed, and put to bed. But Martin remained trapped in a frozen body. I knew who I was and where I was and understood I'd been robbed of a real life. Suddenly, after more than a decade of imprisonment within his own body, Martin began to once again feel his members slowly and painstakingly movement followed and then came rigorous rehabilitation in his late 20s now he learned to use a computer to speak soon after he got a government job then he graduated from college with a degree in computer science started his own web design company and married his wife joanna in 2008 martin pistorius story it may sound far-fetched but the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Strokes states this. Locked-in syndrome. That's what it's called. Locked-in syndrome. Truly a prisoner in your own body. It is, in fact, a real disorder. It is hard for us even to imagine 
what claustrophobic fear or the hopeless bondage of being locked in one's own body, unable to talk or walk or communicate with the outside world, what that would be like. Sadly, as we consider from a spiritual perspective, there is an even more fearful bondage. One that is actually far more common. It's the vegetative state suffered by every person who is cut off from God by sin. Though robbed of real life, we know that they do not live without hope. We are a people of hope. For in Christ, Paul says in Ephesians 2.1, Even those who are dead in transgressions and sins can find newness of life. Yes, the Bible says in Galatians 4, 4, that sermon point number two, in the fullness of time, God sent forth His Son. As we read from Isaiah, He and his disciples had hope in the Lord. They had hope in the Lord, even though God had seemingly hidden his face from the house of Jacob. What about you today? Do you ever feel far from God? Maybe as though he had somehow hidden himself from you? Where are you, God, you say or cry? Well, I say to you today, Be ready. Stay ready. For the Lord may choose to break into your life either through a subtle or dramatic way. Fast forward hundreds of years from Isaiah to the gospel according to Luke. Chapter 1, which we read from a moment ago. Here you have the visit of the angel Gabriel there to Mary. And as the angel comes to Mary to announce to her that she will have a son, notice the words which were spoken. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Those are Christmas words, friends. Do not be afraid. A great part of the Christmas message are the words, fear not. Fear not because the world was in fear. People were living in fear. Fear gripped the hearts of people just as they do today. The angel said, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Favor with God? Yes, that's the concept of grace. Grace. Unmerited favor. You have found grace. God has extended to you grace, just as He has extended that to each and every one of us today. You remember the Bible says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Well, favor with God is the same as grace with God. Mary found favor with God. The fullness of the time was near, and Mary had received the grace gift of hope. Vernon Grounds shared in the publication Christianity Today about his friend and something that happened with his friend when he was in seminary. It seems that the seminary did not have a gymnasium, so he and his friends would go to the nearby uh, basketball court at a public school. And there was an elderly janitor who was so good and patient with them. He would sit there and wait patiently for them to finish for the day before locking up. He enjoyed watching them and seeing their youthfulness. And he sat there day after day, But he didn't sit idly. He sat reading his Bible. 
One day, Vernon's friend asked the janitor what he was reading. And the man answered, well, I'm reading the book of Revelation. Kind of surprised because most people, including seminarians, tend to shy away from the Revelation. But surprised, he, he asked the gentleman if he understood what he was reading. He said, oh, yes, the man said. He assured him, I understand it. And so the seminarian asked, well, what does it mean? And very quietly, the janitor answered, it means that Jesus is going to win. Yes, Jesus is going to win. And so, yes, as we close today with our third and final point, when Christ was born, hope was born. Christians, my fellow disciples of Jesus, we are going to win because Jesus is going to win. He is the hope of the world. Now, I am by no means a connoisseur of great art or any kind of art for that matter. There's so many things I know nothing about, that being one. But from time to time, perhaps like you, there'll be a painting or a picture that will really just kind of speak to me, it just sends a message, just in one glance, one look. It's a strong message sometimes, and I remember a while back looking at such a picture, and it was a picture of an old, burned-out mountain shack. And I remember so well when I, I looked upon it, I, I thought, my goodness, that really is burned out because all that was left was the chimney. And there also in the picture, you see, no doubt, the remains of very few possessions, maybe some outside the home. And in, in front of this destroyed home was an older gentleman, a grandfather-looking man. And he was dressed only in his underclothes. Very sad picture, really. And then there was a small boy there also, and he was clutching a, a pair of sort of patched overalls. And it was evident that the child was crying. Well, beneath the picture, the artist or someone else perhaps later decided to put as a caption that no doubt the old man was speaking to the boy. And they were simple words, and yet they really presented a, a really profound theology, God-centered philosophy of life. And these were the words in the caption. Hush, hush, child. God isn't dead. God isn't dead. That was vivid. The vivid picture of that burned out mountain shack, that old man, the weeping child, and those words, God isn't dead, it just kept returning to my mind. I can see it now. Instead of being a picture or a painting uh, replicating or representing despair of life, it has come to be a reminder of hope. I need reminders that there is hope in this world. I know you do too. We're here today because of the hope of the world. We're here because of what God chose to do. As Ellen prayed so beautifully in her prayer this morning, nothing we deserved whatsoever. But God wanted that fellowship and relationship with us. And He did the only thing He could do. And somehow, some way, He gave His one and only Son. In the midst of all of life's troubles and failures, I know personally I need mental pictures to remind me that all is not lost. As God is alive and He is still very much in control of the world. 
I know that He is in control of the here and the hereafter. Just as we prayed earlier this morning for the Meyer family and the Jackman family, these two we've lost to death are now in the very presence of God. Somehow, some way, however that works, we don't know exactly, but they are at perfect peace because of the hope of the world. And I know when we get to Christmas time, and Bruce said today, it's so exciting, we start singing more of the carols, and I love that melody. You know, it's just something that gets you going. But when you really stop and listen to the words that you're singing or that you're hearing, and you can, you can see the lyrics, and you realize what great theology is found therein. And one of the ones I, I thought about just as in preparation of the message for today was uh, just a little phrase from that song that is probably so, so difficult for people to sing, O Holy Night, right? That's probably one of the toughest ones to sing of all. But in there, it says something like, A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. A thrill of hope. That's what we have, friends. This weary world we're in can rejoice because of hope. And it is my prayer that during this Advent and Christmas season that you and I can really experience the hope this Christmas. Truly experience that hope. The hope that Christ brings to life and the hope that He brings to every situation, no matter how hopeless it may seem. Because you see, it's all about grace. It's all about grace. God's amazing grace. We have the grace gift of hope. May we pray. Father, as we continue and begin to wind down this hour of worship, we thank you for your message, your perfect and holy word. We thank you for the acts that have taken place over the centuries to bring us to where we are today. But none of this would be possible without your action. When you chose to come to this world and to be one with us and among us through the person of Jesus Christ, our Savior. We thank you, Lord, for the greatest gift ever given and received. May we realize the hope that we find in him. Our hope is in you, Lord, and may that sustain us, not only for these hours, but for all the hours remaining in our lives. May we realize that you are indeed the means by which we are coming to have a life that is abundant and ultimately eternal. And Father, we know that there are so many in this world who are without hope because they're without you. You're there, but they have not acknowledged your presence. So Father, help us this day to be more resolved than ever to truly make your love manifested in our lives. May people see Christ in us. And may they worship you just as we have chosen to do. Continue to keep us in fellowship with one another and keep us ever close to you. And again, we thank you so much for your amazing grace. And today, because of that grace, there is hope. In Jesus we pray. Amen. The first Noel... Another beautiful hymn, uh, Carol.
we'll be singing that. And as we do, perhaps today there's a, something you would like to respond uh, to, perhaps something you've heard, God has poked you just a little bit, or maybe you're struggling with an issue right now, or more than one, and you do, you feel like it's just hopeless, you feel helpless, but it doesn't have to be that way, because there is hope. Maybe that's a decision you just want to make today to say, God, I do trust you fully. You know, you did it before and you can do it again, right? Sometimes that helps to look back in in your life to see where God has worked miracle upon miracle and situation gotten you through so many in so many different ways and times. And so now, why should this be any different? At this season, at this Advent Sunday, just say, Lord, I'm going to trust in you because you are my hope. Thank you for being there. Maybe you'd like to join with us today. We'd love to have you move your membership here or come upon your statement of faith, sort of like the Bundys did. Bob and Brenda came forward last Sunday at the end of this service, and it was so nice to welcome them. Maybe there would be somebody else here today. There could be someone here who... I don't know, maybe you've been faking it. Maybe you just haven't been genuine. God knows your heart. It's time. Say yes to Jesus Christ. I received that gift of a Savior. He died for my sins. He did that in my place. Come and receive Him. and Make that known. And let us celebrate with you. Whatever it might be, as we stand together, You make those decisions.
Amen. Thank you all so much for your worship today. I pray that God is pleased with us all as we've come to His throne of grace, seeking Him now and forevermore. May that be our desire as we have our ultimate hope in Him. And I thank you so much for doing all the things that you do as His church, as His people, being there for others, going out of your way to help and provide hope even to so many. May we be His transforming agents in this world. Now may He be with all of us as we go. Father, we thank You so much for our time together in worship. May we truly give back to You a portion of everything You've given us, and that includes every bit of our time, all that we can do. May we give, Lord, the good words that You give us through Your Holy Scripture. May we share the love and the assurance of faith and hope and trust May that be found in us, and so therefore may you use that which you have implanted in us to give hope to others. That comfort and that hope with which you've given us, may we give to all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.